Well, my name's Monica. I'm a fag hag. <laughs> My dad died when I was a little girl. And over the years, despite having had some pretty intense and, and occasionally disastrous relationships with gay men, my gay friends have just always been there. Straight men leave, gay men stay. I'm a third generation fag hag. My grandmother, Dorothy, had a close friend whose name was Keithy. My grandmother was his beard when being gay was still a crime. You weren't out in the sense that people talk about being out these days. My mother was a much more obvious fag hag. When do you first remember becoming friends with a gay man? Um, probably Bobby, I suppose. They used to go clubbing all the time to gay bars. Sometimes I'd get invited, you know, this the whole crazy life that I didn't actually know was crazy at the time, you know, I just assumed that that was normal. And I, of course, have been a fag hag all my life. <laughs> Monica being made fun of in her own house. Oh. It just seems to be this wonderful symbiotic clownfish sin enemy thing that's going on and I don't understand it. And now I've got three daughters, it seems I've bred another generation. I remember I asked Nana in a very loud voice what fag meant. And then she was just like, mm -hmm. wow, cigarette. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a bundle cigarette. of sticks. Bundle or that sticks. thing that you eat in English breakfast. I suppose I want to make this film so I can explain to my daughters why they're fat hacks. Because nobody was ever able to explain it to me. <laughs> Give them second thoughts. So. Obviously. Yeah, yeah. Obviously. But then I, I met Steve at a nightclub. Surprisingly, though, not a gay nightclub. I did spend almost all of my time in gay nightclubs as a single mum which, you know, makes sense. He was not gay. He doesn't appear to mind that I thought he was gay. I had to explain to him, of course, that it was a compliment. Before I met Monica, I'd never been in a, in a gay club before. He's learned the hard way what it's like to marry a fag hag. Uh, we call him a fag stag. Can't say that, that's too awful. <laughs> it's kind of true. It's kind of true, I know. Judy Garland and Liza Minnelli and Bette Midler and Cher and Kylie Minogue, you know, these fabulous women. I think there's, you know, the general inference that we can't get boyfriends of our own, which isn't true. Or that without our gay friends, we'd somehow be sitting at home by ourselves on a Saturday night surrounded by cats, drinking ourselves into oblivion, which also is only sometimes true. <laughs> I prefer the term handbag, partly because it's gender neutral and partly because I consider myself to be a, a fabulous accessory like a handbag. It's time for us to step out from behind our gay friends and say, hello, I am here. I have been your pretend girlfriend when you didn't want to come out. I have been the person you came out to. It's always been straight people who have been, you know, making the changes. And we don't, you know, necessarily need an entire parade, but a bit of a parade would be nice. We're going to create a handbag float for the Gay and Lesbian Mardi Gras Parade in Sydney. I don't know why I'm a fag hag. I don't know why I'm so attractive to gay men. I don't know why I'm so drawn to them. I want to find out those answers. You know, is it social? Is it scientific? Has a memo gone round to the gay community that I'm someone you should be friends with? I have no idea where this journey's going to take me. Come, come, it'll be fun. We'll go dancing. <laughs>